Hey guys, so this week I thought that I would share with you how I press flowers. There are three methods that I like to use and I interchange these methods because some flowers do better um, on one method and other flowers do better on another method and also um, for speed, sometimes I need some flowers dried quicker and this method that one of the three methods I'll show you will um, help you to achieve pressed flowers really quickly. So I hope you enjoy this and I hope you get something out of it and most of all I hope you get to enjoy flower pressing because not only is it therapeutic to pick them, it's therapeutic to see the process from them drying to being dried and pressed and it's just a great way to preserve beautiful flowers. So the three methods I use um, include using books, using a flower press and also using a little tool I guess uh, called a microflow. So I'll go through each three processes and I will show you what I use and I will also give a little demo of how I use the flowers and um, press them. So I've had people ask me for tips about how to press flowers and I guess the thought is behind it and certainly something that I also thought before pressing flowers is that you will just press them and it'll be fine and it will work out. The thing is is that it's really a hit and miss thing. Once you figure out what works best, repaper and the flowers, um, you should be able to keep going and having much success with your pressings um, but do not fret because there are some flowers that don't press well and it can be a matter of trial and error and I've certainly had a ton of those lots of mold and yeah it's just something that happens with so using books are one of my favorite process methods to use uh, because I just have a ton of books and it's easy to just open some pages and slip them in between. Uh, the thing with books is they, if you use the wrong paper, it can go mouldy. Now I'm not an expert in everything pressed, but I'm just going to share with you some of the things that I've picked up. So with this book in particular, it's just an old nursing book of mine. It's papery and so I find that when you use uh, more paper paper because you can have you know sort of plasticky paper or glossy paper I find that this works better uh, with papery books so I also um, I don't have it on me at the moment but I also use our yellow pages um, because I find that a lot of flowers can um, work there. It might, might have something to do with absorbency. Um, I don't really know the science behind it, but anytime I've used glossy paper, magazines, some turn out. So it's not that it's impossible, it's just the success rate is down. Um, what I also do when I have books and I don't want the books to get wrecked is I will just use some craft sheets of craft paper in between these uh, pages so I'll open up a page and put two sheets of craft paper or you know photocopy paper whatever it's called printer paper in between and then put the um, flowers in between that um, it'll protect somewhat. You've just got to keep an eye on it really. And that's with all pressed things, except with, with the microflow, because you'll be watching it immediately. So you can monitor it that way. But okay, so I have my book and I'm going to 
open up a page and get some flowers that I've picked so that I can press them. And when you pick something, sometimes I will cut the bulky bit off. So here you'll see that there's a bit of vein and then the stem. Um, you can press it as is, but if it's just too bulky, that it might A, get mouldy or B, not press flat, um, then I would chop it off. And it all depends on if you want some stem to be visible or not. Uh, for this one, I might just press it as is. You also want to get flowers of the same, I guess, thickness. Um, so I've got a little pansy. I'm just going to press them, place them in. And another one. And I'm just going to leave it like that because I've got other things to do. And then what I would do is close it in and then I will get a thousand other books, anything heavy, bricks, anything that's going to compress this, squish it more till it becomes flat. So it'll be just a stack of, for me, a stack of books and anything else heavy to press it flat. And that is pretty much it. And now if I was to continue to press in the book, I would flip to another page and say I want to use my sheets of paper. Just push it down like that. I get some other flowers. I do find that some flowers it's better to press that way just because you get a better shape. Now I'll put my paper down and sometimes I like to guide it down with the paper and then put the book back together again and then same process of opening up pages and adding more um, it will get lumpy like it, it so you do want to be mindful of how many flowers and what type of flowers you have in here um, the flatter the flower the better the more you can um, use the one book otherwise move on to another book that's it. okay so I've got this giant um, flower press um, this is one that I've made or at least got my husband to make for me but I designed it and it's just made with some plywood uh, this is probably my favorite way to press flowers what's constructed is two bits of ply some thick card or cardboard then some paper which this is just photocopy printer paper the good thing about these wooden flower presses is that um, thicker flowers can go into this um, still not every flower is to be pressed um, just the makeup of them just don't press really well the other thing I wanted to say is um, all flowers will eventually fade in their color and become more browny, um, creamy, earthier colors. I'll show you how I press with the flower press. So this is my flower press. Um, the most annoying part about it is taking the little nuts off, I have to say. Okay, so lift the lid.
actually face it this way. So, I think this was just a few days ago that I pressed these. This flower is a bit wrinkly. This one isn't so wrinkly, so um, sometimes it is a hit and miss. Like it'll still press, but I kind of like the smoother looking. So these are coming along nicely. So you will need to check on them. This, where this is stuck, uh, mold can grow. It's just quite um, big. And so just checking to see if there was mold there. And so it takes a little bit longer for it to press. And I just layer them with bits of cardboard and some sheets of paper. But you can get away with um, some bigger flowers. I've never um, pressed azalea, so it'll be very interesting to see how it comes along. So you can get rid of these thicker bits, yeah, like that. Or you can try leaving it in. It really, it's really up to you to experiment. I do find that the darker colours press better in reserving, preserving the colours, whereas this white azalea will turn brown um, more, quicker. Let's see if I can pull this green just because it's sticky. You can also get the little pieces and um, press those as well. So if you wanted to press that, you could, which I might do, even though I took this off because it was sticky. It really is about um, experimenting. So in this section, I'm going to do all big flowers and just ha so happen to be azaleas because that's what is growing in my garden at the moment. So I've got some flat like this, and then these ones I'm going to press so that they'll press like that. Some of them look nice that way, um, some don't, and it, like I said, is a case-by-case -case situation and really does require some trial and error. And like I said, I haven't ever... Um, pressed azalea so this will be a trial for me and you'll see that I've got the pansies in the bottom section and these thicker azaleas are above so layering is important. I did want to mention is that you don't have to just press flowers you can press grasses and ferns and bunny tails and all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to put this particular one in a book because it's so, this is a maidenhair fern. It's one of my favorites. Um, and this is very easy to press. So if you want 
definite success, do this one in the book. Okay, so the last one is the microfleur. And the microfleur looks like this and it comes apart by pulling the little tabby things off and you open it and you see some old work that's just colour coming off the pads so you can see that I've really used it I need to get some new pads so I will do that and it comes with two um, inserts that are made of cotton I think but I um, had to throw them out so I've made some using cotton calico and I'm going to test it and see if this works because that'll save me some money if I can use these. So colour does transfer onto this because you're going to use a microwave to pr and these pads. Um, and yes, I always used the inserts, but it's, you know that's not really going to do much with water color liquid flower juices i don't know so what you do is you get the bottom you get a pad get one of your inserts and you're going to lay your flowers down put another insert put another pad put the lid on and then shut it up. Apparently using a microfleur um, keeps the color of the flowers longer, preserves the color of the flowers longer, but I haven't actually tested that um, to see whether that's true or not, uh, but it might. Okay, so I've got my two slides ready to go and there are instructions for how to use the flower press. And when you're using the microfleur for the first time, it's better to go in uh, smaller increments, like 10 seconds or 20 seconds. It does actually give you a guide um, already with particular flowers and how to use them. Do you need a microfleur? Not really. I, I use it because I use it in my business. So I want to press them in different ways meaning some facing down, some facing up. And I'm going to keep to the same sort of sizes or thickness in flower. And all I do is I get my three pieces and I just push it down. Because I have used some pretty thick flowers in here and it has taken all my might to get these little clips on them but this is possible I think this is the max the microflow max I do enjoy it but um, don't be mistaken all of this still takes time uh, you get quicker results with this some flowers I have had to let dry a little bit and I will still put some under a book or something like that. Okay, so I'm in my garage now because uh, we keep the microwave. We don't really use it for food, but we keep it um, for my microflow. Um, so it says to keep the power at 100%. So as you just saw, I put my azaleas in here. Now I'm going to place it into the microwave and select maybe 20 seconds. And see how we go with it. Okay, I feel it, it's not at warm, so I can smell cooked azaleas. So I'm just going to open it up and check my flowers. 
thing with the microflora is that the flowers get wet, obviously because of the sting. So I do like to cool it down a bit before I put it back in. But you can see that it's pretty well pressed. And in fact, the azaleas seem to press quite well. This is Tibuccino here. The purple one that's stuck to the pink azalea. So it kind of feels a bit waxy. I will say that um, you're going to have to keep going and going and going until you get the flatness to your liking. Uh, so this is on now for its 60th second and I'm even considering putting it under a book for a day just to really get those thicker parts um, squished. Uh, you can keep going until it flattens. Okay, this is at 60 seconds. I might give it another whirl before I put it under the book because you might not be able to see here but this is still quite thick that's still quite thick so I might see what I can do but other than that I'm pretty happy with it I'm gonna try these smaller little violas and pansy and see but also look at that beautiful black viola you can see that just gorgeous so I'm looking forward to seeing what it comes Okay, so here's my second batch. They're much thinner, smaller flowers. Um, I don't know if you noticed with the azalea, the white ones, they bruised a bit um, more. So it will be interesting to see how these little violas come. So I've put them on for 10 seconds. Um, when you get more comfortable with the flower that you're working with, you might um, increase that. There are some flowers that I've used and I have put it on for 40 seconds and it was fine. You just want to not cook them because otherwise you don't have a pressed flower. I think 10 seconds is good. Um, might flatten this one out on its face so I can. So, this is them at 60 seconds. Um, I kind of stop when it's no longer wet and it feels a bit more papery. And I think. Um, Oh, it's so pretty, it's like a picture. Um, I think I am going to put them under a book or the flower press uh, overnight just so that I can um, really ensure that it's flat and dried properly. But yeah, this is basically it. And I, if I can, I'll give some updates on the microflow ones and I'll give an update on the other ones that I've pressed probably in my next video that'll only be a week um but we should see some progress there so yeah hope you enjoyed okay so it's a day later and I'm just gonna have a look at the flowers that were pressed in the microflora to see how they've come up I wanted to put them in the book uh, just to give some more um, pressure to the stems to really well to the flowers and the chunky bits in it and um, just make sure it really gets dried um, put them between the sheets of paper because of the bigger bits in the middle like you can see here sticking to the paper really liking how they've turned out I'll just pull this off because it's still quite wet
Beautiful. I'm actually really happy with how the white um, flowers have turned out because no real signs of bruising on this one. Turned out beautifully. All right, so there we have it. The microfleur flowers, just beautiful.